We left off here at number 13 last time. A novice skier starting from rest right, slides down a frictionless 25 degree incline whose vertical height is 125 meters. How fast is she going when she reaches the bottom? Right? So the vertical height here is 125 meters. So Y initial is 125 and Y final when she's at the bottom of the hill is zero. Okay. And she starts from rest, so the initial velocity is zero. Right? As far as this 25 degree angle, how much is, does that really matter? Well, let's find out if it matters or not. Right? So, um, they want to know how fast she's moving when she's at the bottom of the slope. So you have to ask yourself, you know, these questions. Initial condition, right? And since there's no work done by friction, this is frictionless, right? Total energy initial must equal to total energy final. Then you ask, initially, does she have any height? And if it's yes, she has potential energy gravitation. Second question, it, is she moving initially? And the answer is no. Therefore, the kinetic energy is zero initially. And you could also write down the final total energy is kinetic energy final plus the potential energy gravitation final. So at the bottom of the slope, at the final position, is she moving? And the answer is yes, because we're looking for how fast she's moving at the bottom. Does she have any height? Height is zero at final position, so her gravitational potential energy goes to zero. So now we can say, oh, the total energy initial, which is potential energy gravitation, and total energy final, which is kinetic energy final, they have to equal to each other. So here, mgy initial must equal to 1 half mv final squared. Now notice, her mass does not really matter. Right? This is cancels out. So here we have 9.8 times. Now notice I did not put negative 9.8 in there, so make sure you understand that. Times G, which is, uh, I mean Y initial, which is 125 meters, is equal to 1 half times VF squared. Right? So if you solve for VF, well, VF is equal to square root of, 2 times 9.8 times 125. And that comes out to approximately 49.5 meters per second. That's pretty fast, right? That is approximately 110.7 miles per hour. So if you're skiing, especially in Poconos when everything is all icy, you want to ski in control, right? You, you never want to go straight downhill, right? Doing freedom fries, you know? You got to do some pizza wedges, you know, and some freedom fries, pizza wedges, right? So, so you got to make sure you do that pizza wedges once in a while to, to slow down, right? Yeah, freedom fries, it's always fun, but not when you're going 110 miles per hour. All right, next. Number 14, it states um, a roller coaster right, uh, shown in figure 6 38 is pulled up to a point A. So here's point A where it and its screaming occupants are released from rest. So here, my V at point A is equal to zero. Okay. So Y A, right? So my Y at point A is equal to 30 meters from our zero point right here. This is our zero. So Y is equal to zero at this location. 
right? So assuming no friction, again, because we have no friction, right? because we have no friction, we can say work done by friction is equal to zero. Therefore, therefore, total energy initial must equal to total energy final. Right? Only when there's no work done by friction, we can say that. Okay. So you have to calculate the speed at point B, C, and D. Right. So we have to calculate what's going on at V, B, right, and then. V, C, right? and at V, D, right? All right. So, we can say that because total energy at any point along this roller coaster ride has to equal to each other, we can utilize this simple concept, the total energy initial is equal to total energy final. So we can also say total energy at point A must equal to, right, must equal to total energy at point B, which must also equal to, right, total energy at point C. C, which should also equal to total energy at point D. So no matter where you are, as long as there's no work done by friction, whether it's like, you know, A and a half or B and a half, right? A, B, C, C and a half, D, right? doesn't matter. It's going to all equal to each other for the total energies. So to start out, to figure out what that V at B is, we can set these two equal to each other. So we can say for VA, right, we can say total energy at A, well, we know what VA is. I guess we should be looking for VB, sorry, VB. To find VB, right, we can set total energy at A equal to total energy at point B. So initially, at A, do I have potential energy gravitation initially at A? And the answer is yes. Do I have kinetic energy at A? And the answer is no, because it's not moving at point A. Do I have potential energy gravitation at B? Since the height is zero at B, I'm going to say no. But do I have kinetic energy at B? And yes, I, I must be moving at this point. right? Because all this potential energy has to convert into kinetic energy at point B. Therefore, MGYA must equal to one-half MVB squared, okay? Therefore, notice what happens to the mass of the roller coaster and the occupants. So it doesn't matter whether you have, you know, roller coaster cart full of you know, middle school choir, right, versus, like, you know, all the, like, professional football players, it will, they will all pretty much experience the same exhilaration, okay, on that roller coaster ride, because this is mass independent. Therefore, my G, which is 9.8, A, 30 meters is equal to one half VB squared. So if you were to solve for VB, right, VB 
is equal to square root of 2 times 9.8 times 30, which comes out to, I believe, 24.25 meters per second. Okay, so that's how fast it is moving at point B. Now, what about at C? Well, V at C, okay, can be calculated many ways. Because I can say my total energy at A must equal to total energy at B, which is also equal to total energy at C. I mean, since I know this, I can actually set these two equal to each other. Right? Or I can set these two equal to each other. It shouldn't matter. But here, I only have potential energy gravitation at a height of 30 meters. And here, I only have kinetic energy moving at 1 half mv squared, where v at b is 24.25. Here at c... I have not only a height, but because I don't make it up to 30 meters, I still have some kinetic energy left over at C. So I have both potential energy, gravitation at C, and I have kinetic energy at C, because the height is only 25 meters. Okay? So I like to, you know, I like to use the TA is equal to TEC. Okay? TEA is equal to TEC. So I'm going to do that. So here, I know I only have gravitation potential energy at A. We already said the kinetic energy at A is zero, right? So we already said that. That has to equal to, right? Here, potential energy gravitation at C plus the kinetic energy at C. I have both of these energies at point C. So here I have MGYA must equal to right, MGYC plus one half MVC squared. So again, my masses will all cancel out nicely because I have one in every term. Right? So if I plug in the values, here I have 9.8 times 30 is equal to right, 9.8 times 25, because this here is YC, right? Plus 1 half VC squared. All right. So if I bring this to the other side, right, I could factor out the 9.8 every 30 minus 25, so it's 9.8 times 5, right? So 9.8 times 5 times 2 square rooted is my V sub C. Right? So if you work that out, 10 times 9.8, so square root of 98, and that comes out to 9.9 .9 meters per second at V sub C. All right, what about at V sub D? V sub D is, again, I can say, right, Total energy at A is equal to total energy at B, right? Which is equal to total energy at C, which is equal to total energy at D. I'm just going to set these two equal to each other, you know, because this is very convenient. I already know the answers to, you know. So here... Here, I have total energy 
at point A, again, is potential energy gravitation at A plus kinetic energy at A. But we know kinetic energy at A is zero because it doesn't move. That has to equal to. Here, this is my y d, right? 12. Well, because it doesn't have the height of 30, I don't have enough potential energy to take away the kinetic energy because this height is only 12. So this thing must have more kinetic energy here than at here. Right? So I have both kinetic and potential energy at D. So here I can say the potential energy gravitation at D plus the kinetic energy at D. Therefore, here, potential energy gravitation is MGYA is equal to, is equal to MGYD plus one half MVD squared. Again, the masses will cancel out, right? Giving me here 9.8 times 30 is equal to 9.8 times 12 right? plus 1 half mvd squared. If I bring this to the other side, right, I get 30 minus 12 is 18. So 9.8 times 18 times 2 square root both sides, and I get my VD. Therefore, the V at D comes out to 18.8 meters per second. Whew. All right. So I'll leave it up there for about a minute, okay, so if you can catch up with the writing. All right. So... Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. How do you know that V A is the energy? V at A. Oh, that's because it says here it's released from rest. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that tells us that my V at point A is zero. Good question. Okay. All right. Any other question? All right. I'll leave this up here again. So if you can, if you, if you want to write this down, I'll give you a minute or two to write that down. And as you know, you know, you know, I'm going to be posting this thing up there. So. All right, so you guys ready for the next one? All right, then let's take a look at number 15. Projectile is fired at an upward angle of 45 degrees from top of a 265 meter cliff with speed of 185 meters per second. Wow, wow. This brings back nightmare from projectile motion. However, I'm going to show you something pretty cool 
because if this is So projectile motion. So here we launch this thing at 45 degree angle, which will probably get you the maximum range. Right? Now we don't have to go crazy like we did in chapter three. Okay. It says use conservation of energy. So since there's not going to, we're not going to worry about air resistance. So if we use conservation of energy right here, that means work done by friction is equal to zero. Therefore, the total energy initial must equal to total energy final. Now again, this initial can be anywhere you want, and final can be anywhere you want. But most likely in our case, here's our initial right here, right? And then here's our final. So this, this thing's going to actually travel, right? So it's going to end up here, and this is our final position right here. Right? My Y initial is 265 meters and my y final is equal to zero meters so this is our zero right here this thing is fired at v naught of 185 meters per second now, I know we can probably break these up into components of X and Y and then find out how far it goes up and all that stuff, too. But they just want to know what is the final speed right before it hits the ground, right? They just want to know the magnitude of the final velocity, right, right before it hits the ground. So they want to know, you know, how fast it is going to be traveling right before it hits the ground. They don't care about the direction, right? They just want to know the actual speed. So, well, that's not that bad then. Because since we know, right, the total energy at A, right, or initial is equal to, right, total energy at B, or in our case, final, right, total energy initial. I have to ask these questions. First of all, does it have height? And the answer is yes, it does have height. It has height of 265 meters. That means it has potential energy gravitation. Is it moving initially? And the answer is yes, it's moving 185 meters per second. So that means I have kinetic energy initial. That has to equal to, what's the total energy final? Does it have any height? And the answer is no, because it's zero, so my potential energy gravitation is zero. Is it moving? And the answer is yes. It, it's moving. Before it hits the ground, it's definitely moving. So my kinetic energy final is definitely present. All right? So knowing how to set this up is very important. Okay? So let's see. Let's see what we can do. You guys okay? Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. So here, here, um, potential energy gravitation initial is just m g y initial plus one half m v i squared so this is my v i right my v naught is my v i that is equal to well potential energy gravitation zero 
I have one half m v f squared. Again, my masses cancel out here because I have one in every term. Right? So I can start plugging in some numbers here. Huh? I can say g is 9.8 times initial position, which is 265 meters, plus one half times di, which is 185, I have to square that, is equal to right, one half times vf squared. Okay? So if you work it out, I think you got something like this. I think you got something like uh, 2,597 plus this is a big one. Right? You square this and then multiply it by half. I think you get something like 17,112.5 is equal to, right? Is equal to one half VF squared. Okay. So my VF is equal to square root of, right? Two times this whole mess right here, which is 19. 1709.5, right? So the final speed before it hits the ground comes out to 198.5 meters per second s. The final speed. So this is the magnitude of this final velocity right here. Okay. All right, so I leave that up so you can copy it down. Okay. So take a look at it. Hey. Just so you know, uh, the four hundred two seconds. Yeah. I'm going on a lot of testing very testing positive. Oh shh. Yeah. I mean the line that we did work I mean certainly was absolutely exposed there if it was just a second ago. Right. Um, it's not like they weren't shoulder to shoulder. They masked for the most part, but you know, for the most part. So, do, do you have to report this? I already talked to Dean. Okay. The problem is that she was on athlete. You can't just, she can't just go do passive stuff. So she'll, she'll get. All right. Welcome back. Uh, that was Dr. DeCipia. All right. So here, let's take a look at the last problem. Number 16. Now, this looks pretty interesting, right? A small mass M. So this mass M right here, right? It slides without friction. So there's no work done by friction. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this mass M slides without friction along the looped apparatus. So this is like coming down, and it goes around the loop and comes around like so, right? So... If the object remains on the track, even at the top of the circle, so at the top of the circle, it stays on the track, right? From what minimum height, this height right here, must be released so that it stays on the track? So at the top, right top of this loop, is the critical point right here. And obviously, so is the initial point, right? Because at this point, if it doesn't have enough speed, it's going to go up and then it's going to like eh, fall off the track, right? So at certain speed, it's going to be staying right at the top, barely making over before it actually comes down like this. 
So at the top, when it's barely making over, is the minimum amount of, right? That's the absolute minimum amount of speed needed to go over. At that time, at that instant, the normal force of this will be zero, okay? At V minimum, right? At V minimum, right? F normal goes to zero, okay? And that is at right here. But what other force is available at this location? Well, there's definitely FG involved. Right? FG is the only one. The normal force would have been, if there is the normal force, the normal force would also go down into towards the center, right? With same direction as FG. Okay? But we're looking at the minimum that it's going to go over. So that's very important. So at this point right here, which I'm going to call that, you know, point final, and we'll call this initial, if you want to make a different color, maybe. We'll call this initial, right? We'll call this final. Or if you want to call it A, and you call this B, that's fine, right? You could call this like C and then D, whatever. So here's the critical point at the final position. At this position, right, we have to say, okay, my sum of all forces is equal to MA. But because it is going in a circular motion, my force is equal to MAC, right? Remember that? And then sum of all forces at that point is equal to, I only have one force, and that is the FG. And since they are exact forces, net force is equal to this net force, I'm going to set these two equal to each other, where MAC is equal to FG. Now I'm going to keep the AC direction positive, and the AC direction is in towards the center, right? Therefore... FG is also towards the center, therefore FG is positive as well. So he's, it's MV squared over R is equal to MG. So notice, my masses will cancel out again. So my V squared has to be RG. This is important to know because that's how fast it has to travel in order to make it over the loop while staying on track. Okay? Now, how is that helpful? Well, we know the total energy initial because without friction right here, right? So work done by friction is equal to zero, therefore total energy initial is equal to total energy final, right? So total energy initial must equal to total energy final. Initially, right, potential energy gravitation initial plus kinetic energy initial do I have height? And the answer is yes, of course I do. This is the height right here. So your Y initial is equal to H. But we don't know what that H is. We have to solve for it. And since it is released, right? Since it is released, my V initial is equal to zero. Okay? My V initial is equal to zero. That means my kinetic energy initial is also zero. So that must equal to, now comes this part right here. Well, potential energy gravitation final. Do I have potential energy gravitation final? Of course I do, because I have height. Here's my zero, so my y 
right? Here is zero. This is my zero. This is my height. So here, what is the what is the actual height of my y final? My y final height is two radii of the circle. Two times the radius r. Does that make sense? Right? Because if this is a circle, the radius from here to here and radius from here to here, so two radii. And I definitely have kinetic energy final, because if it's not moving here, it's just going to fall straight down. But it has to continuously move in order to right, go around that track. Matter of fact, it has to move at square root of Rg up there to keep it going. All right. So now, let's plug in. What is the kinetic, well, potential energy gravitation initial is just mgy initial, and that is equal to, right, mgy final plus one half mv final squared. So this v final is this v final. And since this v final squared, v final squared, I could just substitute that with rg in here, okay? Again, my masses will cancel out nicely. Here, G times H, because my Y initial is H. Okay, why did I write in blue? I'm sorry. GH is equal to. Here, G times, my Y final is 2R. plus one-half times, when I substitute that VF squared with RG, look what happens to my G. Boom, boom, boom. Therefore, my H is equal to 2R plus 0.5R, which is equal to 2.5. So if you release it, two and a half times the radius of this loop, you should make it over the loop. So if you're going to be a roller coaster engineer, right, there's going to be obviously some friction. So you want to double up on everything, right? So if you release it from the 5R, it will probably make it pretty nicely, assuming that friction is not going to be that much. Okay. All right, so I leave this up here so you guys have some chance to write it down and absorb. All right. All right. So let's take about a five minute break and then uh, we'll meet back at 1020. Okay. So I'm going to pause this video. Okay. So hope you had a nice break for five minutes. Welcome back. Let's start. Lesson four, conservation of energy with friction. Now, we cannot let total energy initial is equal to total energy final in this case. Okay? So, when we have work done with by friction, okay, the friction basically robs an object of some of its mechanical energy. So, it's steals, right? And, and basically, the work done by friction just becomes heat, mostly, right? So it doesn't really get lost. It actually just transfers to heat, and it dissipates throughout the universe. 
So within that system, that thermal energy is still there. So when you add up that thermal energy, it still becomes total energy, right? So you have to think of it as like heat energy, okay? So if friction is present, it robs an object of some of its mechanical energy. The sum of kinetic energy and potential energies decreases as frictional force does work on the object, okay? So in that case, we cannot let the total energy equal to total energy final. So total energy initial does not equal to total energy final in our case if there's work done by friction, right? Okay. Matter of fact, initial total energy is going to be greater than the final total energy. Okay, so total energy initial is going to be greater than total energy final. Now, what would happen if there's a total energy final is bigger than total energy initial? In that case, there must have been some kind of an explosion happening or something with energy added to the system. Okay, so. That's a different story. But when there's work done by friction, total energy initial is going to be bigger than total energy final. All right? So a bicyclist climbed right, with combined mass of 90 kilograms starts down a hill. So the bicyclist is starting from top of a hill, right? Height of 50 meters with velocity of 10 meters per second. So here, we have a bicyclist and then goes up 55 meters up the next hill. Right? How much work did friction do to the bicyclist? So I'm going to I'm going to assume that this bicyclist goes up 5 meters up to next hill and sort of comes to rest. Okay? So Okay, comes to rest. All right. So, how much work did friction do on the bicyclist? Right. So here, the height that we start initially So this here is 55, no, 50 meters, right? So this is our zero, and this is our y initial, which is 50 meters, right? So here, when we get to the other side, right, your y final is 55, right? So initially, the bicycle this comes uh, comes up the hill here. Right? So initially, the bicycle is, is moving at ten meters per second. When the bicycle is gets to the other side, right? V final is zero. Okay. 
Maybe I am not reading this thing correctly. Yeah, we switched this thing around. I'm sorry. Instead of 50 meters high, I'm going to consider these height to be the same. However, this distance here is 50 meters. Sorry. And this distance here is 55 meters. And I'm going to consider these to be the same heights. Sorry. Same height H as initial and final to be the same height H. I think this may be a better way of looking at it. Okay. So even though this is obviously a steeper hill and then it's going to go back up 55 meters, that's the way you got to look at it. I'm sorry. All right. So here is an equation that we should be familiar with. Sometimes this equation can be written as following. Now notice this negative sign. This negative sign is actually can be distributed in here. So this is equal to kinetic energy final minus the kinetic energy initial plus potential energy gravitation final minus the potential energy gravitation initial. And that's what work done by friction is. Okay? Sometimes it's better to leave it this way than this way. Okay? So by looking at this, potential energy final is zero because it comes to a rest. We definitely have kinetic energy initial. Here, we have potential energy gravitation final, but it is MGH. Here, we have potential energy gravitation initial, which is also equal to MGH. Right? Here, we have negative one-half MV initial squared. Right? So notice what happens to the potential energy gravitations. This whole thing will just go to zero, because when you add plus and the negative, this will just go to zero. So there is no change in potential energy gravitation. So work done by friction is only equal to this. OK? So work done by friction. which is equal to just negative one-half mv initial squared. But work done by friction is f friction dot delta x. So delta x is 50 plus 55, which is 110, OK? However, since this is a dot product, it is Friction times delta x times cosine of 180. And that's very important. Okay? So, in our case, my friction is mu mg cosine of theta. Now, there's going to be two mg's here, so two, I mean, it has to be normal force on the inclined plane, so just keep it this way. But this times delta x times cosine of 180 is negative 1. That has to equal to negative 1 half mv initial squared. So what happens? First, these negatives will cancel out. And the mass will cancel out. This angle theta is actually this angle theta right here. Okay? And then we can work it out, the rest of it. So we can figure out how much work is done by, work done by friction. If we just calculate how much kinetic energy we start with. Okay? 
So if we were to start out with 1 half mv initial squared, all this kinetic energy just went to work done by friction at the end. So 1 half times 90 times v initial is 10 squared. So that is equal to 9,000 times 1 half, right? So 10 squared is 100 times 90 is 9,000. And half of that is 4,500 joules is how much kinetic energy we started with. And that's exactly how much work done by friction has to be. I'll give you a better example in the next one. Okay, so yeah, we'll do a better example. All right. So for this one, we have a ball bearing. So this is the initial. So I guess. The spring gun. So this is this is really the initial right here, right? This thing is coming out, and the mass of this ball bearing is equal to 0 0.0052 kilograms. Right? It's fired vertically at height of h, which is 18.0 meters. With initial speed V naught, so V naught is equal to 14 meters per second, it gets buried. This distance D is equal to 0 0.21 meters. So this here is our zero height. So this Y is equal to zero here. So our y initial, our y initial is equal to h plus d. Because if this is our zero, our initial height is then 18.21, 18.21 meters is our y initial. All right. So what is the Average upward frictional force at friction does the sand exerts on the ball as it comes to rest. Well, as this thing is fired from here with this initial velocity, with this much height, right, then at this location initially, I have both the kinetic energy and potential energy gravitation, right? At final location right here, when this thing gets embedded and gets buried in here, it comes to a stop. So at the final location, I have no height, so I have no potential energy gravitation. I have no speed because it comes to stop, so no kinetic energy finally. Where did it all go? It all went through heat, work done by friction. Okay? Therefore, we can say work done by friction is equal to, ready? Change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy gravitation. So what is work done by friction? Work done by friction is force friction dot, I guess, D in our case, which is equal to kinetic energy final minus the kinetic energy initial plus potential energy gravitation final minus the potential energy gravitation initial. We know kinetic energy final is zero because it comes to rest, right? Because my V final is equal to zero my h, my y final is equal to zero, right? 
Here, I definitely have kinetic energy because I'm moving at this 14 meters per second. Potential energy gravitation final is zero because my y final is zero, so this goes to zero. I do have initial potential energy gravitation because I have height, y initial to be 18.21 meters. So now, since this is a dot product, we say force friction times d times cosine of 180 because you know the friction has to act upwards to stop this thing. So the force friction is that way and my displacement d is down this way. So that's why the cosine of 180 has to happen. Boom. That is equal to negative 1 half mv initial squared minus mgy initial. So you know that this is negative 1, right, which is going to be canceled out with all the negative on the other side. Therefore, force friction times d, which is 0 0.21, right, that's how much distance the friction works on, is equal to mass, which is 0 0.05. 0, 0.052 times initial velocity, which is 14 meters per second squared. I forgot the one half, sorry. Plus 0 0.0052 times y initial, which is 18.21. So the only thing now you have to do is a friction is equal to all this mess divided by that. So let's work it out. So what is 14 squared times 0 0.0052 times 0.5? So this I get 0 0.5. 096 plus 18.21 times 0 0.0052. You get 0 0.094692, and this is 0 0.21. When I add this up, right, I get. 0 0.604292 divided that by 0 0.21 and my frictional force came out to 2.88 newtons in upward direction. Okay. Ishan, you have a question? I forgot that too, didn't I? Thank you. Times that by Thank you. That's correct. So that is equal to so point. Oops, no, that's not it. So here, 0 0.094692 times 9.8, and I get uh, 0 0.5096 plus 0 0.92792 over 0 0.21. So what is that? Plus 0.4196. So I get 1.42, no, 4376 over 0 0.21. So this is not right. So 
I divide that by 0.21, and I get 6.85 newtons as my frictional force. Thank you, Ishan, for catching that. All right. All right. And it should be pointing upwards. All right. So this is an example problem. Now, I will put you guys in, see if you can do the next few pages in the breakout session, OK, with your group. And I'll stop the lecture here for today so you can start working on three problems. There are only three problems for your homework, so you should be able to get this done before the bell rings. So I'll stop.